All right, today I'm gonna to go over the some of the safety features of the SIG P365. Um, this is the XL variant, different from the, or it's pretty much the same from the regular 365, it just has a longer slide, longer grip, but the functioning is all the same. It's actually the exact same trigger group where most of those safety features are built into. This model here is the one without the manual thumb safety. On the manual thumb safety one, you actually have a thumb safety kind of similar to like a 1911 back here. And when I say similar, I mean similar in appearance and feel, not function. So the 365 one that does not have the manual safety, it is a little bit different for people because it there isn't one of the Glock style uh, bladed trigger safeties here. And yeah, it will go off if you holster it and your shirt gets caught in that trigger guard. I've just messed around with dry firing and yeah, it is possible. So you definitely have to be careful there. Uh, a note on that is you really shouldn't ever be in a rush to reholster. Um, take your time, make sure all of your clothes are clear and all that. that that's gonna be the only real time you'll have an issue. Um, this works a lot like other pistols. I mean, there, there's been so many different variations in the in the past hundred years that a lot of stuff is the exact same you're not really reinventing the wheel so the first one I'm going to go over is your disconnector so that disconnector what it does is that makes sure that you have to fully reset that that trigger prior to uh, it, it prevents it from going fully automatic is what I'm trying to say so you have to reset that trigger between each shot so I'm going to slide this on here because that is best seen over here. So your disconnector is this little guy right here. Look at this to point better. This little piece, so I don't have the barrel just so I don't have to fight spring pressure and everything in here, but as the gun is recoiling, that's in its full recoil position. It's going forward, putting the next round into the chamber. If you watch the disconnector here, it's going to move up into a slot inside that slide and what that does is that allows that to re-engage and you can actually fire it at that point when it is like this and not fully engaged you're not the trigger still moves but it is pushed your transfer bar is pushed down and out of the way and it is not engaging the actual uh, sear or release mechanism for that so as it goes back, you see it slides back into place. How that works as a disconnect is, I'm gonna dry fire it here. Once you fire it, you can, if you were to work that slide, it's not gonna just go off as it comes back in. You have to, it'll reset, and then you can do it again. So it's not, a. Uh, it is a safety, like I said, it's called the disconnect, but that is a technical safety. So the other one I'm gonna go over is very similar to the Series 80 1911s, if you're familiar with that. So the Series 80 1911s have that firing pin block. And if you look inside this slide, you have that same thing right here. And what that does is this is, this is the firing pin here. That's the tail end of it. Pushing it all the way forward right now that firing pin is physically unable to protrude. It is mechanically blocked. To make it go further, you can see it is being blocked right here. You have to push down on this spring-loaded plunger, and that allows that firing pin to go forward the amount that it needs to set the uh, primer off. So how is that plunger being depressed while you're pulling or while you're firing? Because standard like this it is not so that first section of your trigger when you're firing one of these as you pull that trigger i'm talking about that stage before you get to that 90 degree where it breaks so this stage right here if you look right here you're going to see a little lever rise up hopefully you can see that there that's from that first stage and then you go all the way with it and you can see where that sear is pulled down out of the way. But so that first stage, that is what's depressing 
this firing pin safety here. That's where that lever sits and it pushes up and hits that. So those are the two main mechanical safety features here. Um, once again, it doesn't have a manual safety, so you do have to ex exercise your number one rules of firearm safety, safety to the extreme as far as you will never shoot yourself if you have it if you never have the barrel pointed on your body i know in like i appendix carry so obviously at some point it's going to be um, pointed at me in one way or another but it is also that trigger is completely protected inside the holster that i use so this is one of those guns that you need to have a holster that uh, protects that or covers that trigger guard and doesn't allow anything to be inside there uh, most people making holsters for this right now they know that and they're aware of that but hopefully that clears up some things i know because a lot of people are always saying there aren't any safeties on it well yes technically there's no manually operated one but there are many safety features built into this if you guys have any questions just uh leave them down in the comments